You can't take it with you, but you can leave something of value behind, your legacy. I'm Paul Zohav, and I've created the Living Legacy Life Book, designed to answer the question, what would you like to remember before you forget? Spending less than an hour a day, you can create a Living Legacy Life Book that helps you harvest and process a lifetime of memories that serves you as a memory aid when recollection becomes, well, a problem. To help you become a living legacy and to preserve your experiences for family and generations yet to come, let's take a short tour of the Living Legacy Life Book and you'll see what I mean. You begin with the section labeled My Family and History. You'll use this first section to create a clear picture of where you and your family come from and to describe the world into which you were born. You share with us your family beliefs, traditions, and legends. For example, my family has a story of a great-grandfather who chose to send his six daughters to this country instead of finding dowries for them. Is it true? We'll never ever know, but it is part of my family's history. In the second section, My Life and Times, you craft the history of your life, your experiences, and the time in which you lived where you have been, what have you done, and with whom. You will tell us what it was like for you to go through a depression, a war, the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War era. For example, I will never forget the day in eighth grade English when they announced that President John F. Kennedy had been shot. And I still remember the day I was driving across the Verrazano Narrows Bridge into New York City, black smoke billowing in the sky as terrorists struck on 911. Where were you? Can you remember? In section three, My Living Legacy, you share all the wisdom you've gathered over a lifetime. After all, you've been around the block a few times. You've handled a few of life's hard knocks. You're still here. So tell us, how did you do it? What is the secret to a good marriage? Raising children? Saving money? What is God's place in the world and God's plan for mankind? What difference have you made in the lives of someone else simply because you were in the right place at the right time and said just the right thing and their life was forever changed? Lastly, you let us know exactly how you'd like to be remembered. Speaking as a clergyman, it is always awkward for me to speak a eulogy for someone I barely know. In your life book, you get the last word. Now, how often does that happen? Then there's the fourth section for downsizers. How many times have you seen good friends and relatives move to smaller homes or into a retirement community only to become a shadow of their former selves? It did not have to be that way. Downsizing your life should not mean garage sailing your mind, compromising your sense of self or your identity. The fourth section is designed for downsizers who are looking to move to smaller quarters but without leaving important pieces of their personalities behind. You'll take an inventory of your home and surroundings before or just after you move, taking stock in such a way that you're free to keep the stories but leave the objects behind. For example, you'll have an opportunity to tell the stories surrounding family Thanksgivings and of that special platter you served from before you pass it on to your favorite niece. After you do this, you're free to give away the platter, but keep the memories. Then there is section five about the future. You have one. You're not dead yet, and since dreams and desires are important for living, the fifth section is called, well, my plan and dreams. It begins with a bucket list of everything you'd like to do if you were able and if you could. You list all those things you've always wanted to do, the places you've always wanted to travel to. Then, once you've created your bucket list, there are pages for looking at regrets. Apologies not yet given, forgiveness for things not yet forgiven. You can list those tasks that if accomplished might soothe old hurts and rebuild some of the burnt bridges you've left behind. So long as you're breathing, it's still not too late. The last section, my documents and the appendix, is intended to preserve copies of your most critical, important documents. Your birth certificate, your living will, your durable power of attorney. These are critical pieces of information that you need close at hand with answers to questions those you rely upon need to know and act upon even if you're not in a position to speak for yourself. 
The appendix of your lifebook includes photo mounting pages for key photos and images, plus added pages for longer stories and memories. So, what will you have when all is said and done? You'll have an enhanced sense of self and your life's accomplishments. You'll have an answer for what you talk about after, fine. I mean, you know what I mean. How are the kids? Fine. How's work? Fine. How you doing? Fine. You will have spent good quality time with spouse, children, and friends. You will have a memory aid for when remembering becomes a problem. You will have important documents close by. And last but not least, you will have a living legacy, a contribution, a posterity that will last for generations, a true immortality. And as I said earlier, you can't take it with you, but you can leave something behind. A step-by-step, -step, easy, thoroughly enjoyable, deeply satisfying living legacy life book. Give the gift of a living legacy life book to yourself, another to your spouse, your children and best friends, and then comes the best part. You get to work it with them. It's a gift that never stops giving. The living legacy life book. Oh, and by the way, you don't have to do it all at once. You can do it visit by visit, page by page, until it is complete as you wish it to be. There's no wrong way to use this tool, only your way, the way that works for you. Go to livinglegacy-lifebook.com to order yours today. That's livinglegacy-lifebook.com. Thank you.